and welcome to recreating famous racehorses in Rival Star's desktop edition. Now, I don't know why I hadn't thought of doing this before because it's kind of obvious. It's horse racing and there are really famous horses that lived in real life and we want to create them right here in the game and see how close they actually run to the real ones. Now, before anyone comes at me, we only have four horses for today. And if you want a racehorse that you really love to be recreated, comment it down below. Give me, give me some information. What does the horse look like? How old is it? When, when was it born? That kind of thing. And maybe I'll include your comment in the next video as well. I think that might be fun. So um, I'm actually on a completely clean save today. There are actually no horses at this branch of Pinehaven Acres. So we've got to create them. Now, uh, we can also do breeding in future episodes, but I don't think we're going to be doing any breeding today. We will be doing racing though, because I want to see how close that they actually run. So without further ado, enough waffling, let's jump into Creation Hub. The first horse is arguably the most famous horse, race horse at least, outside of the horse worlds as well, and it's Secretariat. So Big Red was also his nickname. I have some information about him. He was born in March, 1970, and he passed away in 1989. Secretariat is second only to Man of War. Now that's in like standings and like fame, I guess, but I guess in, in standard days, I count Secretariat as the most famous, but I could be wrong. He's 16.2 hands high. He was quite a big boy. First triple crown winner in 25 years. He broke many records, including at Belmont Stakes, where he won by 32 lengths. If you don't know how big a length is, it's, I believe it's a horse, like a horse is a length. So he won by 32, 31 even. Uh, so it was a lot. In 2010, the film Secretariat was produced by Disney, which you can go watch. I didn't really like the movie, but horses, so you can go watch it. And he died age 19 due to laminitis. So now that we have some backstory on Secretariat, Secretariat, I'm very bad at spelling. So he's a stallion. I'm gonna actually put his preference, like his position as back, because if you watch him race, a lot of the times he will be sitting at the back of the pack somewhere and then on like the last lap or the final sprint he'll like race to the front. He's incredible to watch. Also, I'm gonna put like middle to longish distance. Um, I'm also gonna put the track surface as medium because I don't actually know much about what he raced on that much. So I'm just gonna set it to medium. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure he's max stats. I don't know if that's a great idea because I don't know how differently they'll kind of perform. I know that compared to all of the other horses, Secretariat is, on, is the only back runner that we're gonna have today. So it'll be interesting to see him race. Now comes the interesting part. We've actually got to pick out his coat. He has a very kind of bright chestnut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch the patterns to blank because he doesn't actually have a pattern. And he's not even dappled. A lot of the, the horses, or at least the famous thoroughbreds in the racing industry tend to be pretty, pretty bland looking. There are a couple that are very cool looking, but none of the really, really famous ones. Okay, right, we've got none, and on his head, I believe he, yeah, he has a star, I believe. Is it a star or a stripe? I can't see. Oh, it is like a stripe, I believe. Is it? Yeah. So he's, he's got a little, like, stripe. Oh, actually, no, I'm gonna go with this one. This is probably... That's really close, actually. So I'll go with this. I'm not happy with the coat color, though. Um, there aren't a huge range of colors in Rival Stars, which I wish there was. Ooh, this is actually a good one. It's a, mm, it's a little bit on the dark side. Mm, I think I might go with it, though, just because it. I think it's the most accurate. So we'll leave it at that. He actually has three socks. Um, on all of his legs, apart from his front left. Is that my left? I have to check my left and right. Yes left. I'm not 100% on the coat color. I might have a really quick look through the chestnuts again. So I think the coat that I gave him before is a little too light. Uh, this one, I believe it was, it is a little too light. It's giving like hot tomato looking uh, vibes, but it's the closest that we can get. So here is our secretariat. I cannot wait to race him, but we have two other horses to create first. So we'll go ahead and save him. You can find him on the community creations. Good luck finding him though, because as I always complain, you can't search by user. As you can see, my name is Abigail Pinehaven and you can't search by name. So good luck. I don't know. Right. Our next horse is Ruffian. If you know who Ruffian is, she's my favorite race horse just because her story is absolutely tragic. It's so sad. So I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on Ruffian. Uh, she was born in 1972 and she passed in 1975. If that isn't 
a tribute to what is to come, it, it gets kind of sad. Ruffian won every race she ever won, apart from her last race, which was only against Foolish Pleasure, which was another racehorse, where she suffered a severe injury that would eventually put her in her grave age three. She was three years old. Ruffian successfully ran 10 races. So she ran every single one of the 10 races and then she fell on the 11th and she had to be put down. After her death, there was public outcry uh, for more humane treatment of racehorses. So if anything good came out of her, it was that. She was also 16.2 hands, which is the same as Secretariat. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's the information I found. She ran from age two, she was literally two when she started running, uh, to age three from 1974 to 1975. The movie Ruffian was released in 2007 on ABC. It's don't watch it if you aren't prepared to cry because uh, it has the scene where she gets hurt and it's not an easy scene to watch. So I don't recommend watching it if if, you, if you're gonna cry because I would. So actually, I put her down. She's not even a mare. She was only ever classed as a filly because she was literally a baby. She was a baby when she was running and she was a baby when she died. It's so sad. So unfortunately, we can't pick filly because Rival Stars says no. So we're gonna go with a mare. I'll, I put her down as a front preference because after watching some of her races by the way i watched a lot of the races that these horses were in to try and get like a feel of how their race style was and she was usually at the front of the pack so i've also put her down as a slightly mid preference so i'm gonna put her maybe at like 2000 meters i feel like that's a good good distance for her and i'm also gonna put her on a soft track surface i don't know why but i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna go with my gut uh, again i'm going to ooh, not save sorry we go to stats so i'm gonna give her like full stats because i i could get really pernickety about like oh well uh secretariat was a lot faster than ruffian but I, that would take me ages so i'm just gonna put the stats up to to full um but yes have you guys ever seen racing and i should have prefaced this at the beginning but i always i always usually say this when i'm playing this game is i don't support the racing industry uh but you know what i really enjoy this game so if i could participate in the racing industry by playing just a game and enjoying myself that isn't gonna hurt any horses i will happily take that she's a very very dark bay she almost is black i don't think i'll find a bay that dark because i was actually trying to make jericho the other day who's my realistic roleplay horse and he i couldn't find a coat for him either there wasn't a bay dark enough so i might end up going with the black actually that could work. Ooh, ooh, this, this is it. This is it. Yes, that's perfect, actually. Okay, and she does have a tiny little, tiny little star on her forehead. Let's try and make the littlest star we can. Maybe we'll go for the irregular star because I think that's the smallest. Oh no, that's a splotch. Never mind. Yeah, I think we'll go with the splotch because that probably looks closest um she also has no no socks on any of her legs except she's got a tiny little i think it's called a coronet on her back yes back left i believe that's right i hope i haven't gotten these horses backwards that that looks really close to her actually again oh the color's like not quite there but I'm gonna leave it. I think that's as, as close as we're gonna get it. So we've got Ruffian, the mare. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we are on to our third horse. So this horse is also very famous. It has uh, its own movie. And it was very famous because it's an incredible underdog. Uh, we're talking about Seabiscuit. Now I've got some information on Seabiscuit. He was born in May 1933. So he's an old boy and he passed in May 19. 47. He was only 15.2 hands. He was usually the smallest on the track. He had many books and movies made about him and he was quite the underdog. So it wasn't just one movie or one book. It was quite a few because this was during the Great Depression. So this horse was like the Holy Grail sort of thing. He's actually the son of Man of War, which spoiler alert, we're about to do next. He failed to win his first 17 races and his trainer Fitzsimmons didn't spend much time on him and he kind of became like the joke of the stables. He started winning many races some very high stakes and became the underdog of racing. So he is indeed a stallion. He's a bay. He doesn't actually have any markings, which is quite sad. Uh, he's got a shorter preference. So I didn't actually put his position. I'm going to put middle just because when you watch Secretariat race, it's incredible because he literally goes from like almost dead last to first place. I don't think it was quite the same with Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit was great because he kept losing and then out, out of nowhere, he just started winning again. But he, it wasn't like the big kind of leap forward that Secretariat always made. So I don't know what to put for his distance. I'm going to put slightly shorter distance because apparently he was a bit of a lazy bum. I'll also put a, yeah, I'll put a firm track surface. So again, leveling 
them all up. Also, thank you to the person who commented that I can use my arrows because I was sitting here rapidly clicking before, so that's always nice to know. Where did his name go? Oh, I didn't change it. See, Biscuit. It's quite cute because I looked at his uh, heritage. Is that how you spell Biscuit? Oh, Busquit. I put Busquit. Hang on. Uh, yeah, I looked at his heritage and like his great grand dam. I think, yeah, it was called like Tea Time or Tea Biscuit or something. It's very cute. Biscuit. That looks wrong. Oh, it's the I and the U are confused. I'm very good at spelling. Uh, okay, so there is Seabiscuit, who is spelt correctly. And he's a very bland looking boy, but again, he was the underdog. He's supposed to look bland, he's supposed to look like everybody else. You're not supposed to really think that he stands out. Unlike Secretariat, who's like big red, you know, he's this big, big chestnut boy. And our last one is Man of War. Now, Man of War is a very, very old horse, but in a lot of like racehorse world, uh, they class him as the greatest racehorse to ever live. Uh, according to Wiki. Don't know how accurate that is though. So he was born in 1917, which is a very long time ago, and he passed in 1947. So he lived quite a long, a long life then. Uh, Man of War ran 20 times and won 19. There's 19 runs out of 20. And he came second only by literally a neck in 1919. And then he recovered and went on to like win the rest of them. It's incredible if you look at the chart, it's literally just one, 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 one. It's amazing. He won the equivalent of $3,200,000 in today's money. It's a lot of money. He also was, I Googled it and it also said he's 16.2 hands, which is so apparently was secretary and ruffian. So I, I don't know if that's just like an estimate or if that's correct, but apparently all th all three of the other horses we did were also 16.2 hands, but I don't know. So according to this, and again, a lot of it is sort of like estimations because the horse is so old uh, that we don't have really clear photos of him. So his name is Man O War. There we go. He's stallion. Uh, what did I put for his preferences? I didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna put front preference. Um, there's not a lot of footage of his races either, so that's a shame. Um, I'm gonna put about 2,400 because apparently a lot of the races he ran were kind of like longish to 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 mid distance ish. Um, and for the track surface, I'm just gonna put like hard, I guess. I'm gonna assume that he ran in like hard conditions because it was the old day. I don't know. I don't know much about this horse to be honest. Um, I feel like he never had a movie made about him, especially not recently. So I feel like not that many people know about him. Like I only kind of know about him because he's kind of always mentioned a long time alongside like Secretariat and Seabiscuit and, and those who had movies. So I don't know. Again, we are going with the no pattern because again, in the racing industry, despite what rival stars might teach you, nobody actually breeds for color because that would be a waste of time and energy. And if you've ever seen a race, they kind of all look exactly the same in the races, which is quite sad. I wish they'd have some variation. Why don't we do like Appaloosa races? I feel like that would be fun. So according to this, he's kind of, he looks a bit like, what's his name? Um, Secretariat, like he's, he's kind of a big chestnut horse. Although he seems not as bright, like color wise, like he's more of like a muted, but he's not that dark though. More of like a muted chestnut from what I can kind of see. Again, I don't know if that's accurate or not. All of my information could be wrong, by the way. Feel free to correct me. I kind of like this. I kind of do like this. Although he does look dark. So I'm like, that doesn't really look dark. Could it be this one? No. Could that's the one we use for uh Secretariat, never mind. We can't use the same one. I feel like that would be silly. I won't be able to tell them apart because they'll literally look the same. Alright, let, let's go with one of our first options then. Okay, I'll go with that one. I'll just go with that one. He does actually have a little bit of a star. Uh very small. I've noticed quite a few of them have like tiny little stars. Uh and he doesn't have any socks. How boring. I think Socks on horses should be mandatory. I think they're so pretty. Right, so this is Man of War. So they're in my collection now. I'm gonna have to have the laborious task of going back and forth and buying them. But while I'm doing that, feel free to comment down below which horse do you think I was ac accurate with recreating and which do you think I could have done a better job. And don't forget, you can suggest racehorses down below as well. So we'll just fast forward to when I've got all the horses in my stable. I could just be making all of these horses wrong. Honestly, my sorts was just wiki. Could just be completely off with all of it. <laughs>
Okay, so we have the horses in our stables. Um, here's Man of War, Sea Biscuit, Ruffian, and Secretary. I'm so excited to race these guys. So we are going to go to Queen Victoria because it's the hardest races. I wanna see, I mean, I'm really excited to see uh, Secretariat run. Okay, so TJ's picked Man of War for this one. Uh, Man of War is a front position. So let's let's just start with Man of War. So apparently he is the greatest racehorse of all time, according to Wiki. <laughs> and uh, we're about to see him run in Rival Stars. So fingers crossed, first of all, he wins, because otherwise I've clearly gone wrong somewhere if he doesn't. They're ready to go at Queen Victoria Park. Punters hoping for a comfortable win for the favourite, number one. Yeah, it won't say the name because I think it should make the effort to say the name of the like famous racehorses. I don't know, we're number one though. Okay, right. The starter gets them underway. At first to break the line, it's number one setting the pace. Buffalo Barrister in second spot, sparring with Pleasure Zephyr. Blank Barnacle, next by Shining Silhouette. Number one, maintaining the lead from Nostril Mirror. Number one, out in front, Buffalo Barrister in second place. At the 500 pole, it's number one, Blank Barnacle. Oh yeah, he's, he's gone. <gasps> ah, this makes me so excited. Yes, okay, well done, Man of War. That was a killer race. He did amazingly there. Let's see who's TJ's pick for this one. This one's Seabiscuit. Okay, so they want Seabiscuit to run this one. His odds are very good. Oh, I'm excited. So Seabiscuit, of course his backstory is the underdog. It doesn't really reflect that in the game because the game doesn't know that he like missed or he lost 17 races because that would increase his odds uh, quite a lot. Um, but it does look like we're gonna win. So we'll just pretend we're kind of at the end of Seabiscuit's career, hence why he's uh, got such good odds. It's race on here at Queen Victoria Park. Blood Bandits leading the charge. Urgent Wine also off to a good start. Yes, Seabiscuit is played by one Langston and by County. Into the stretch, yes, Seabiscuit. Sinistered Steam trying to outdo them. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a sprint as well. Oh, he's a middle... Oh, and there's quite... Oh, no, 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 he's going fast. He's going real fast. Oh, Seabiscuit! Oh god, there's a gap. Oh, there's a big gap. Oh no, is Seabiscuit gonna lose? Go, Seabiscuit! Go! Go, Seabiscuit! Oh no, he's gonna lose. He came third? Second. Oh no, Seabiscuit, you are the underdog. Oh, that's so upsetting. Okay, well, he didn't quite win his race, but you know what? He gave us a good effort and it does kind of reflect his backstory. So I guess that's kind of correct. Um, and again, he didn't, he did, he wasn't always on a winning streak, Seabiscuit. He did win like a lot, uh, but again, it wasn't always guaranteed that he was going to win. So I basically want it to be TJ's pick so that the horse has the best chance because if it's not TJ's pick, they have a lower uh odds which is not good ruffian ruffian can run this one okay and what was the other one? Oh, and secretariat can run in that one secretariat did not have good odds in that race though yeah I'm, I'll, I'll go for it for this one then we're gonna watch the race oh there's 14 horses in this one ruffian is like my favorite race horse of all time because it's such a sad story and as somebody who's not a fan of the racing industry you, you love a good sad tale to kind of drive the point home <laughs> Stalls back racing. Berry Blizzard getting away to a great start. Berry Volcano is also in the run. Berry Blizzard number one just ahead. But as they come to the 16th pole, it's Ruffian drawing away to lead by 12. Ruffian in front. Romance Confetti in third. Then Berry Volcano. Berry. Oh, she's she's won it. She has to have. Look at her. Oh, she's so gorgeous. <gasps> oh my God, she's she's gone. There's no one near her. In my eyes, that's the 11th race she won. Side note, during the time that Ruffian was running, because she was um, a mare, 
there weren't a lot of mayors in the biggest standings. So a lot of women in the world really took a liking to Ruffian because they kind of felt represented by her in a, in a world dominated by the stallions. There was Ruffian running despite everything. Ooh, that's very good odds. Okay, I'm so excited to watch this race because he's a back preference horse. They're off, and the favourite gets a magnificent start. Lively Bingo, right behind. Lively Bingo, next. Being pushed by Badger's Blocks. Strong Blocks, moving forward. On their back is Brock Hitchhold. Play, it's Badger's Blocks, just ahead of Bubble Bird. Still going, it's number eight, Sick Man Hecom, in second place. Yes, oh, I'm gonna see the time difference. Two six, they're not even in yet. 219, three second difference. That's a huge difference in horse racing. Secretary, mwah, you boss. That's incredible. I should have done this way before. This is so much fun. So don't forget to comment down which racehorses you want me to do next. And if I should breed them, of course, these won't be accurate breedings because there's a lot of other thoroughbreds involved that uh, we don't really have the time or the space to include. But maybe we'll get some interesting foals out of the ones we have. Now, at the minute, we only have Ruffy in as a mare. So we probably need a few mares uh, if we are going to do that. But that was incredible. I had so much fun doing that and I'll probably do it again as well. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay positive and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!